Hi, Sarah. So it looks like you have a very calm and a very cute horse that you're working with here. So I wanted to see him lunging or running loose just so I could see what he naturally could do, but he's kind of too slow on the lunge, so I don't see a lot. So if you can use this arena for him to be turned out in, and if you could chase him around in both directions, so I can see if he trots or he paces when he's loose, or if he does both of those things, that'll help me to help you better. So see if you can get that when you get a chance and send that to me, okay? So let's talk about the lunging here. When you're lunging them, it's fine to do in a little circle for a small period of time, but that's better if you're just kind of practicing groundwork. With him, since we're trying to make his gait better, we want to get him on a bigger circle. So your rope is probably, I don't know, looks like 12 to 16 foot in there. If we could get a 20 foot rope, that would be better because then you can lunge him in a bigger circle. So he'll be able to go faster. And then again, I could see if he trotted or he paced it when he was loose. And then we can also use the poles in the circle if we're making a bigger circle. The circle that you're making here is, uh, is a little small and you're working harder than he's working. He, he's very smart. He's like, I think I'm lunging her. So <laughs> see how much you're moving? You're ch kind of chasing him around. You should be moving less than the horse is moving. So whoever's moving more is a more submissive one. Whoever's moving less is more a leader type. So you want to make sure you're moving less than him. So what I would invest in is a 20 foot rope. I can send you links to that if you don't have one. And then I would invest in a either training stick and a lunge whip because you might need both with him. You might have to drop one at one time and then go to the other one to help him to get going more. So your circle is probably like a small 10 meter circle. I want your circle way out here. So I'd like to see a real big circle that we could lunge him around and get him warmed up on. Now, the lunging does a couple of things. So one, it always helps you to see if your horse is lame. If they're an energetic horse, it helps to get rid of some of the energy. If it's a real quiet horse like him, it helps you to get them moving. So it's not like you would need to lunge him hard if he's a quiet horse, but we want to get him to get some get up and go. So when you ask him to move forward, that he does. You're swinging that rope that whole time to keep him going. That's too much work, okay? So again, watch yourself how much you're moving around, how much you're swinging that rope to keep him going. It's kind of desensitizing him, and it's not getting him to move around more. So you could do it like that just for a couple of minutes, and then I would make a bigger circle and get that lunge whip, okay? I'm so gonna... this was another day you were lunging him. Okay, he's very cute. So again, you're working a lot to keep that horse just walking. I can't imagine what you have to do to make him go faster. <laughs> okay, so I would get a lunge whip and a longer rope. Okay, and we got to get after him a little bit more because we want to make sure that when you ask him to go forward, he goes and he is very cute. And I know you're new at this. So uh, new people usually tend to be overly nice. And see, kind of, you're moving out of his space as you're trying to get him to go. He should move out of your space. So if he cuts in, you should hit him with that rope. It doesn't hurt. I hit myself with the rope all the time by accident. So if he's cutting in, don't back away like you're doing to give him more space. Whip that whip towards his belly area. So it'll hit him, and then he'll move away from the rope, and it'll make a bigger circle. And you might have trained him to keep moving the whole time you're doing that rope, but that's too much work. So you want to make sure that he keeps moving and you occasionally have to use that rope so he knows to keep going. But otherwise, we want you to do less work, not more. Okay, now I'm going to stop it for a minute just so I can talk to you about the lunging. So what I want you to do is make a bigger circle with him. Have them walk around it a couple of minutes, both directions, and then I want you to ask them to go faster. It doesn't matter if he trots, it doesn't matter if he paces, but he needs to move, okay? And if he won't move, I want you to get after him. That's why a stick, a training stick or a lunging whip will help, and I can send you links to those if you don't know what those are. It doesn't matter if he trots or paces when he's on that lunge line, unless we're working at the gate at that point in time, which we're not. So first, we just want to make sure he has a go button. When you ask him to go, he needs to go. So what I would do is cluck, 
Uh, you can tell him, you know, gate, that should mean to go faster to him. And when he doesn't go, you want to get after him with the lunge whip or the training stick. And you might have to be pretty aggressive in the beginning and you might feel very mean doing it. But think of how our parents feel when they're reprimanding us. Remember, they always used to say it hurts more. It hurts us more than it hurts you. It's the same thing. You got to teach this horse that when you tell him to go, he needs to go. That's for his education and for the rest of his life. The better we train him, the more successful he will be for you. But if you ever have to sell him, the more successful he will be for those other people because he will know what he needs to do in life. So it's very important that you, since you have a young horse, that we teach him correctly what he's supposed to do. So on that lunge line, I'd like to see him walk a little bit for a couple of minutes. Then I'd like to see him gait, trot, or pace. doesn't matter what which one it is. A couple of minutes in each direction and then I'd like to see him try to canter on that lunge line as well. If you have a round pen you can always use that. So again I'd like to see a bigger circle. A lot of the natural horsemen people do these small circles and that's okay. Again it's good for the groundwork but then to get him moving for us to condition him get him stronger and to work on his gait he needs to know how to lunge in a bigger circle or move around in a round pen and he needs to go forward when you ask. The harder part is some of these quiet horses that are very dull, they're great, but you have to be pretty aggressive when you ask them to go. So when you cluck and he doesn't move, he only has three seconds to respond. You go one, two, three, and then you run after him with that whip and you make him move. Once he starts moving, then you can relax. Anytime he slows down, you get after him again. You shouldn't have to move the whip the entire time to keep him going. It should just be once in a while, okay? But that's a very important thing because we also need him to respond to your leg the correct way when you're riding him. Okay, now he goes through the poles just fine. That's gonna be the speed of his flat walk, what you just did. Now when he's walking here though, it's a very slow walk, which is fine, but that's not his flat walk. That's just what they call a trail walk. And he just seems to be very slow and kind of lazy. And those horses can end up being a little trippy, so you want to make sure he's awake. Now you sped him up, so this is good, and he's going faster through the poles. So again, that is going to be more the speed of our flat walk. I'd even like it just a little bit faster. So this is just your slow walk, and the things I see as he's walking slow is one he reaches way up with his back end okay he has a very short back and he's got some overreach so he's stepping over his front hoof print if he is very very pacey when he's loose so i'm hoping you send me a video so i can see that then it's going to be easier to get a flat walk and a running walk from him and a saddle gait if we can get him to trot then Again, we'll be able to get a fox trot from him. But the way I see him moving, it looks like he might have some Tennessee walking horse way back in his background because he does have uh, what they call overstride. So if you watch how his feet are moving, you'll see he's stepping past that front hoof print. Now here you're walking a little bit faster, so that's good. Again, that could be the speed of his flat walk to start. And that's what we're going to try to get you to do under saddle. Okay, now here you're trying to go a little bit faster. And he is getting a little bit more lateral or towards the pace, but he is not step pacing there. What I want you to watch is how he's walking, and you'll see his head going up and down. And that would be even a better flat walk because they're supposed to shake their head and stretch up. But I do see him getting more lateral with his legs as you're going faster, which means he is going more towards a pace, but he's not actually pacing when you're moving him around here. We'll see when you come back. Okay, so that would be a good flat walk. Now I'm gonna stop it for a second. The other thing I want you to see is where he naturally carries his head and how he's moving. So as you're running around, his head is up here, but when you ride him, his head is down there. So this is the frame that we wanna to try to ride this horse in. And then we might lower it a little bit. But when you're riding him, which we'll get to, his head is actually too low. And it's making him very heavy on his front end. You go to get on him, uh, we want to get you on just a little bit better. It's nice that you can get on from the ground, but this looks like he's going to be a big horse. They keep growing. 
until they're about like nine years old. So he's already big and he's gonna keep going a little bit more. When you're getting on, get a, once you get your foot in your stirrup, if you're gonna do it from the ground, try to get this leg a little closer to your horse. It'll make it easier. And then when you jump, think of jumping three times. And each time you jump, you wanna to try to get higher before you start swinging on. As you're jumping, look over here kind of on the diagonal, it'll help. And as you jump, you'll go one, two, and then three, you're gonna jump up. You're gonna look over there and try to really pull on his mane to help you to get up there. Because as you do it, you're kind of pulling on the saddle, which then pulls on his back. And his, he's young and his back is growing. So you wanna look up, that'll help you get on easier. And then once you get in the saddle, then just sit down and then you can help adjust your stirrup. The other option is to use a mounting block. That's better for his back, but it is also good to practice getting on from the ground. So if you need to do it on the trail, you can get on and off. But for the horse's back, so we're not pulling the saddle to the side and putting a whole bunch of weight on one side when they're young, it's much better to use a mounting block for him. So here you're just doing his slow walk, which they call a trail walk, okay? Now his head is low, and as you start going around, it actually gets a little bit lower and he gets more weight on his front end. So normally horses have about 60% of their weight up here and 40% back here. When we're working on their gait and we're trying to get them to be good trail horses, we don't want too much weight up here because it'll make that horse trippier. If they keep their head way down as we're walking on the trail, sometimes they get they start getting bored and they get sleepy and then they don't pick their feet up as high and then they can get trippy that way. So we wanna make sure as we start to move him around and gait him that we kind of elevate his head a little bit and then we're gonna get him to try to engage his back end. But for walking around and warming up like the first top five to 10 minutes that you're on him, this is perfectly fine for him to walk with his head down and stretched out. So the, it's hard to focus. So the video is a little bit farther away, but his head carriage was a little bit better there as you were going across. Body position wise, you're a very pretty rider. You're looking up where you're going. You sit up nice and tall. It makes a very pretty picture. You got your heel pretty much underneath your hip. Your hands are in the right position. So riding wise, you look like a very nice rider. It's just making sure that you're effective when we try to gait him. Now here it looks like he might be veering away from the uh, camera. So when he does, you want to push him over a little bit more towards the camera. If he's cutting in, press with that right leg, put your right rein right against his neck and kind of open your left rein out to the side to try to guide him over in this direction. Um, right here though, his head carriage is pretty good. Because again, we don't want his head too low as he's going around. So it looks like you're starting to go a little bit faster. But here, his head is actually too low and he's getting too much weight on his front end here. So again, the, as I'm watching him move, he looks like he's gonna move better if his head is a little bit up here. Now, right as you come into the camera, he was doing pretty good. He was shaking his head, his head was higher, and you had a little bit of a speedier walk. And that would have been better for your flat walk. Once you cross the screen, he slowed down. So it looks like you're trying to kind of do his flat walk here. So I would like his head a little bit higher and the speed's not too bad, but he could be a little faster. I'm gonna pause it. What I would do is when you're trying to get him to go, it might be the saddle, but your leg is coming a little bit forward. So try to keep your leg back a little bit more. You wanna squeeze with your calves, that should make him go forward. If you squeeze with your calves and nothing's happening and you have to kick him or dig your heels in to make him go, that means he doesn't understand it well enough. Okay, so then it's best to carry like a dressage whip, which is a long whip, and that way you carry it in your hand, you have it behind your leg, and when you squeeze with your calves to make the horse go, if they don't go, then you wiggle the stick, which just creates some motion, which a lot of times the horse will just move away from. Again, your horse looks kind of on the duller side, so if you squeeze with your legs, he doesn't go, you wiggle the stick, he doesn't go, then you start tapping him with the stick and then you tap him harder and harder and harder until you get the speed you want. 
as you're going around the arena, you keep a light feel with your leg. So it's best to keep your, your calf just pressing against him, kind of like if you were just touching somebody on the shoulder with your hand. So just a light pressure so he need, knows to keep going. And then when you want to stop, you take your leg off. But that way he'll have a better idea he's supposed to go. Now, if he really won't listen, sometimes you got to hit the lazy ones a little bit hard in the beginning to get them to respond. It's okay if you hit them and then they shoot forward. That's all right. It's going to get better in time. But then they'll start to respect the stick, so then you won't have to hit them as hard, and then they won't shoot forward as much. But right now, we got to make sure that when you're squeezing, he's responding to it, so you're not working very hard the entire time. On the trail, they're easier to ride because they're going somewhere. So you're always going to have to work harder in the arena, but it's very important that he listens to you here, so when you need him to listen to you on the trail, he respects you enough and does what you ask. So. This is the place that it's easiest to work on their gates too. So we gotta make sure he goes forward from your leg when you ask him. Okay. So here it looks like you ask him to go faster. So as you're starting to ask him to go faster, his head is a little bit too low. And then what happens when you ask him, he kind of jumps forward. And so what that means is that you might have put too much leg on him because he responded with too much energy. So let's watch. So right there, he goes a fair amount. Now, you'll have to tell me, you know, how much leg you put on him. But whatever you did, you still want to ask him to go forward, but you want to use half or quarter of the amount that you did because he went too fast and he jumped past like three gates when you were trying to speed him up. So I'm going to try and play this again. So he's very slow. Then you add your leg. So right there would have been your flat walk, but he goes way past it. And his head carriage right there is correct. I'm sorry, it's so far away when I use my phone, it gets blurry when I try to get close. Now, as he jumps past this, he does start going towards a pace right there. But what you might have missed was there's, there was something in between. So I'm gonna play it again. So see that he had a flat walk. And then he did a little bit more of like a running walk and then he went to pacing, okay? And that's why you're bouncing. So he skipped past a bunch of gates because he has no idea what he's supposed to do and that's normal for a young horse. They don't know they're supposed to do a flat walk and a running walk for, for us because we need to teach them that, okay? So you're his trainer now, so you're going to have to try to teach him how to do this or, you know, if, if you need a trainer, I can help them to help him to get him to gate too. But he did too much and then I'm going to show you something else. So as he goes and he goes past all his gates and goes right to pacing and you start bouncing, you bring him back to a walk and that's his reward. So what do I mean by that is that he did the wrong thing in here. He paced and then you brought him back to a walk and gave him a rest. So when they do pace, we never wanna let them rest. We never wanna slow down and then go back to a real slow, comfortable walk because then they think what they did over here is the correct answer. So he thinks pacing is the answer. So by accident, you're actually teaching him to pace. So what we wanna do is ask him, again, with less amount of leg than you asked him to go, to make him walk just a little bit faster. And then when he does a little bit faster a walk, then you stop and reward him. If he paces and you can feel that you're bouncing, slam on the brakes, that means shove your feet forward, lean back and a big whoa, stop him right away, back him up like five steps pretty fast and walk off immediately. That shows him that if he paces, we don't like it at all and he gets more work. But right now he's getting rewarded for pacing. So by accident, you're teaching him to pace. Okay, so now as you're coming across here and I can see better, you ask him for more speed, but the problem is he doesn't know what speed to go. So when you ask him to go faster, you're gonna have to keep your rein shorter and keep more contact on that rein. You're gonna have to feel a little pressure in your hands, like a pound or two of pressure. 
Because if you don't, when you ask him to go forward with his, your leg, he doesn't know how fast it goes, so he just goes really fast. So I want you to watch your reins here as you ask him to go faster. See how that rein is flopping? So he has no contact. You can see it's right up in here. There's no contact. And so he doesn't know how fast to go. So he just goes really fast. So he's like, well, pacing was easy. And last time I paced, you brought me back to a walk and rewarded me. So I'll just do that again. So that's another reason he keeps speeding up so much. It's kind of like when you're driving your car, you got the speedometer to tell you how fast to go. So that speedometer is going to kind of be like your reins. And then you push on the gas pedal, you look at the speedometer, and you're like, oh, I want to drive five miles per hour, which is really hard. And you try to drive at five miles per hour, but you can see if you're going past it or you're not going fast enough. So your reins are going to be like your speedometer. And so you need to keep more contact. So shorten your rein up a little bit, and then you'll be able to tell him more how fast to go. And what you'll do is you'll squeeze lightly with your calves. As he starts to speed up, I'm going to have you squeeze and relax on the rein, and then that way it'll tell him how fast to go. But you'll see he he had a gate there. That was... Uh, but he kind of went past it. So he went past all his gates. He kind of went past the flat walk, the running walk, and the saddle gate. Let's play it again. So right there would have been towards his flat walk or his running walk, but he goes right past it and he goes to pacing. So it's not like your horse doesn't have talent. He does. He just doesn't know what to do and your reins are too kind of loopy. You're being too nice and he needs your help to get that gate because he doesn't know what to do and he doesn't have the training, you know, because he's so young. So... What I want you to do, and this is hard for beginner riders or even Western riders, is I want you to shorten up that rein, and I want you to shorten up about at least six inches. It could possibly be more if I see it in more videos. So I want that rein, instead of having a loop, I want a straight line from the bit up to your hand, and I want you to feel pressure from his mouth against your hand because that's your communication line, that's like your telephone, and that's the way you're gonna tell them that's perfect, that's too fast, that's too slow. So if he's too slow, you can loosen, you know, you can loosen up a little bit just by pushing your hands forward or by opening your fingers some. If he's too fast, you're gonna pull and bend the elbow and then tighten your fist. If he's just a little too fast, then you're going to half halt on the rein by squeezing and relaxing on the rein. The hard part, especially when you're trying to learn how to ride, is it's a lot to do at the same time. So when we're asking him for gait, we squeeze with our calves and then immediately we keep a light pressure with the leg, but then we're squeezing and relaxing on the rein to help regulate them and keep them at the same speed. So as you're going and you're squeezing with your calf, you're going to half halt on the reins. And I'm going to send you a video where I'm riding a horse out on the trail because I talk a lot through it when I'm half halting and when I'm using my leg. And that might help you to understand the concept. So again, the problem is not that he's a pacer or anything. He just doesn't know what to do. And each horse is different. Some just gait because they're bred so well. And some just trot when they're, you know, not trained. And some just pace when they're not trained. So at least here we're seeing he's more on the pacey side. But if I see him loose and I see him trot, that'll give us a better idea that he has even more talent and can do more things. But this is a very nice horse. Don't get me wrong. This is going to be a great horse. He's going to be nice and smooth. You're not going to be bouncing anymore if uh, you keep up these lessons and let me coach you to get okay. there. So here you slowed him down a little bit. And that's your flat walk. So he does have a flat walk. He's still flat walking. Now he's slowed down too much. Okay. So he needed more leg there, a little tap with the stick to keep him going. And now he's just back to a slow, very slow trail walk. Okay. So when you get that flat walk, what you just did, I would stop, rest him then, scratch him, or you could give him a little treat because that's what you want. And you want him to know that's the right answer. So anytime you get a couple of those steps in the beginning, 
you rest him and reward him, and then you go back out and you ask for more, and you ask for more steps. So if we got three steps, then the next time we want four or five steps, and then after that we want six or seven steps, and then you ask for more and more before he stops and gets his reward. The other thing, when you're making your circles, he needs to bend more. So you wanna bring that leg back and make sure he's not leaning in, because when I saw on this video some of the circles, He's cutting in too much. Bending is very important with pacey horses because it helps to separate their legs. So we want to make sure anytime you're turning and stuff, he's not leaning in and he's really getting off of your leg. If he's not and he's just leaning on it, then we might have to put a little pair of spurs on you because they don't like to lean on spurs. And then, you know, you could kind of dig the spur into him as you're doing it. Now, your poles are pretty big and heavy which is nice if you're doing groundwork with them. But when you're riding, you might want to use a pole that's not so big because if he trips over it, uh, then he might really trip because these are big and heavy. And that just makes me worried when you're a beginner. Home Depot has some poles in the landscape section that aren't very expensive and they're easy to move around as well. And what I would do is I would make a circle of poles, which you'll see in some of my videos. And when we were trying to go towards that flat walk, I would make a big 20 meter circle. I would stick the poles, one at 12, one at three, one at six, one at nine. And then I would ride over those poles, trying to get that flat walk. Uh, if he will just do the speed like you did over here at the flat walk, and he's not pacing, then you don't need the poles for the flat walk, but it's still good exercise for him. Um, and we wanna make sure that that flat walk is down before we try to go to the next gate. So once we get that flat walk, you don't wanna go any faster. You wanna flat walk around that arena and make sure he has it really, really well before we start to increase speed. So him just walking over these poles he does it pretty well, so he, he's getting good proprioception. So that's fine exercise to do. But again, if we're gonna walk faster over him, I think you might be a little bit safer if the poles weren't as heavy and big and we stuck it more in a circle would help you get there. Now here he's nice and relaxed, but he's almost getting too much weight on his front end. So you did a great job getting his head down. You almost did it too well. And so he gets his head a little too low at some points in time. So here you come again. So here it's too low. Because if you're bending him and working him, these guys aren't quarter horses. And if they get their heads down too low, a lot of them get real heavy on their front end and they get very trippy. So you gotta be careful that you don't have their heads down to their knees. So here you're just doing a very slow walk. Okay, he's four, but he can start start doing more. I want you to expect more out of this horse. And even though he's he's young, he's gotta start getting some knowledge in there. Okay, so this is another day. I want you to hop bigger to get on there and really grab a big chunk of his mane kind of up here to help you get on because it'll help you get up there easier, which then will protect his back more. And then again, a mounting block would be a great thing to do. Here he's walking a tiny bit faster. Your reins are still too long. So we want to shorten those up at least six to eight inches. And just so you know, I, you're walking around. I'm not sure if you're trying to do your flat walk or you're just doing a slower walk here. But as we start to gate him, we got to make sure those reins are much shorter, like up here. And we want his head higher because again, it's gotten too low. And he's just kind of being lazy and all of his weight is on his front end. And we got to teach him to engage his back end and get his weight off of that front end and drive with his hind quarter. As you go over the poles, again, I'd like to see a faster walk. So you could do the flat walk over the poles in a circle, but smaller poles just to be safer. So here you're getting a little closer to a flat walk, but I would like his head higher and for you to walk faster, just a mile per hour faster than he was. Here again, it looks like you're asking him for more speed and the reins are loose and floppy. So he just jumps forward into that pace, okay? But that again, he doesn't know. So 
the way we're gonna help that is you're gonna use less leg to make him go forward. You'll have shorter rein, you'll have more contact on him. So that way when you create the energy with your leg, you'll catch it with your hand and you're gonna half halt and try to have him only just go a little bit faster than you were doing your trail walk and not so much energy. Again, he has gates in here, but he skipped over all of them and went up to the pace because he went too fast. Okay, so this is when he was going way too fast and he was pacing, but I want you to see as you get over here, you do get a flat walk, but it's only for a step and then you quit. So he's pacing, there's your flat walk. Now it's gone because then he went too slow. But I just wanna try and show you the speed of that flat walk. And so your flat walk, you wanna think of a fast walk uh, it's a regular horse's extended walk, if that makes any sense to you. But it's a walk with some energy that you're asking the horse to go somewhere. Like right now, this is just a trail walk and, you know, relax. So we want those reins shorter. And I guess that was the end of the video. We want the reins much shorter. And we want less speed when you ask them to go faster. Okay, so I'm going to tell you what to do, and then I will attach videos and information, and if you have any questions, let me know. So each day you go to ride this horse, I want you to lunge him first. I want you to lunge him in a big circle, and we're going to lunge him over some poles, okay? And you're going to set those poles up like I'm going to show you in the video. We want him to possibly learn to trot if he doesn't trot when he's loose. So when he goes over the poles, don't worry about it that much. Just make sure you're steering him well and getting him to kind of the center of the pole. And you're going to make it at 12, 3, 6, and 9. And then you're going to stand in the middle at, with your lunge whip and a longer rope and just lunge him over it, okay? I want you to do it five minutes one direction, five minutes the other direction. Then... When you get on, it's fine to walk around like this with a loose rein and just walk all the way around the arena for like five minutes to 10 minutes so he gets a good warm up. Within that time, because he's walking so slow, he does not need to stop and take any breaks, okay? After the five or 10 minutes of warm up, you're gonna shorten those reins up and you're gonna do the arena routine I have posted. So you're gonna start with walking and making a circle and then you're gonna change and walk the circle the other way, and then you're gonna make a figure eight. What you want to practice is bending that horse and then just steering, so he learns to steal, steer well. After that, then I want you to make a serpentine, which is a wiggle back and forth, and that's in my arena video, so I'll attach that as well. And I want you to go back and forth, up and down that arena, just practice in bending. Let's say twice, so up and back is once, and then up and back is twice. Okay, so you're gonna do that. Then what I want you to do is do the arena pattern where you're gonna make a big circle at one end, big circle at the other end, a big circle at the end. Then you'll do some leg yielding. And then after you've done that, you can stop, give them a couple minute break. Then I want you to start your flat walk, okay? So when we go to do that, you must make sure those reins are much shorter. His head is a little bit higher. And when you go to flat walk, I want you to ask him to go forward by squeezing with one leg, then the other leg, one leg, and then the other leg, okay? Because then he's more less likely to jump forward. If he doesn't respond to your leg, then you need to carry a stick or spurs and use them if he won't go forward. Remember, if you use the stick, you just wiggle the stick first. If that doesn't work, you give small little taps. And if that doesn't work, then you start tapping more. If you're not good with a stick and you wanna put a little pair of spurs on, then you ask him with your leg first. If he doesn't go, you turn your toe out, you raise the heel up until you feel the spur make contact. And it's just gonna feel to him like somebody's sticking their thumb in his side. And you raise it up and once he starts moving faster, you take that spur back out. And you never kick when you have spurs on. You're just supposed to turn your foot, raise it up and kind of poke the horse lightly until he goes. So then I want you to try to flat walk around that arena. Now, if that's not working out and you're like, he just keeps pacing, even if I'm only going a little bit faster, then what I want you to do is you're going to walk him in a big circle instead, bending him around it, trying to get the flat walk. If that still doesn't work, then we're going to use the poles and we'll set them up at 12, 3, 6, and 9. And what you're going to do is walk over those poles. 
I want you to time it and you're gonna flat walk for five minutes. Then you're gonna give them a break. You'll do a turn on the forehand to change your direction. And again, I have all this stuff written down. And I also have it in videos if you don't know how to do it. And then you're gonna repeat everything the other direction. You'll make the circle at the end, in the middle, at the other end, you're gonna leg yield, all doing that just at his slow walk or what's called his trail walk. And then after you do that, then we're gonna flat walk the other direction for five minutes. Again, same thing. If he can flat walk around, you'll go around the whole arena. If he's kind of pacey, then keep him in a big 20 meter circle because the bend will help him to stay out of the pace. And if he's still pacey, then you're gonna use those poles in the circle. So instead of having the poles like this, I would just set them up in the circle because it's much easier to use. But again, I'd get the ones from Home Depot because they're lighter and not as hard for the horse to get over. Uh, because again, some horses will trip, catch the foot, and it can make the rider go flying. So I don't want that to happen to you until we make sure he's good. As you're riding his flat walk, you're gonna press with one leg, then the other. Press with one leg, then the other. I kind of do it with the rhythm of their belly because as you walk, the horse's belly goes side to side. So as their belly goes over to the right, I push with my left leg. When the belly comes this way to the left, I press with my, light leg, with my right leg. So you're trying to help him to extend his walk. He reaches underneath himself pretty good. And then again, you're just trying to keep that same speed. Now, I didn't mention this, but I do want you to do this. In the beginning, when you start this flat walk, if you get it, you're going to feel yourself move back and forth in the saddle a little bit. You're going to see his head go up and down. When he does that, that's when you should stop, rest him, give him a little break, scratch him, give him a little treat so he knows that's the right thing. And then start asking for more and more steps until you build it up to five minutes. Okay. And then that's all we want to do because he's young. We don't want to try to get a running walk or a saddle gate or anything else at this point. We want to build his foundation by getting his flat walk first. And then the rest of the gates will be much easier to come. Okay. And then I mentioned it before, but still send me a video of him running loose so I can see if he trots or just paces because then that'll help me to help you get those gates. If he's just pacey, then the flat walk and the running walk, saddle gate are easier to get. If he trots, then we can try to get him to fox trot. But if he doesn't trot, with you being a beginner, it's very hard to get him to do a fox trot. We can do it in time, but I would just get the flat walk and the running walk first, and then we can work on it from there if you still want to get the fox trot. Okay, I hope that makes sense. I think you're a very pretty rider. You had very cute outfits. I like your outfit. <laughs> with the short and the boots that was adorable your horse is adorable i think you're going to do a great job you're going to make this into a nice horse and you're going to learn a lot about helping uh, gated horses learn to gate